Yo, this is Ned Arb um, with Beast One, Noisy. Just want to say this interview was recorded uh, probably about like a few weeks before uh, Lil Peep's death. I just want to say that um, Peep was one of my best friends. I, I was lucky enough to ever work with him. I loved him with like all of my heart and I know he had a huge impact on everybody. His music was like therapy to me and to to many others. So I just hope that everybody can just appreciate him and his art and uh, just know that he cared about anybody that ever listened to him. And uh, and yeah, I'm just glad and happy that I ever got to know him. But um, yeah, shout out Beats One, shout out Noisy. Let's get it. What's up? I'm Ned Arb. I'm originally from Alberta, Canada. I grew up there in like my elementary years. I mainly grew up in New Hampshire. There's really no scene in New England or New Hampshire as far as hip hop and rap goes. Growing up, I was in like emo and hardcore bands and shit like that, like screamo bands. So there was like a scene for that. Yeah, Goth Boy Click is a uh, Goth Boy Click is a collective that I'm like heavily involved with. Uh, it was started by Wicca Phase and Coldheart in like 2013 or 14. They met on Tumblr and basically like at the same time, um, we all used to be a part of this music collective called Thrax House, which was just like some that uh, started in Seattle, but then like branched out and to like recruit people from other parts of the country. Now it is what it is, it's really cool. Yeah, shout out to everybody in that. So I met Pete because of uh, this guy named Young Jizza, who's like a singer, does similar to us. And uh, since I do vocals too, he had like pretty much had us both on like a song as features on the song called Apparition Love. Anyway, so that was the first time I heard Peep. He was like on the first verse and I had the third verse. He was already a fan of me through like Xavier Wolf, Eddie Baker and stuff. So he hit me up or I hit him up after this song came out and we were just like, yeah, let's do and um, he had just moved back to LA, but we had a mutual, f or not a mutual friend at this time, this guy named Brennan Savage, who's uh, been peeps, like he's known peeps since he was like 12. He, um, his family had moved to San Diego or some, and then he went to college in LA. So Brennan had a house in like Pasadena. And then when I met Peep, it was like December of 2015, like online, he was like, yeah, I live in, Pasadena and I was like all right word I'll just come up to Pasadena and like kick it with you guys and like so that's what we did I just we made a bunch of songs like before we met like Beamer Boy and like uh, we had a whole tape called California Girls that we put out that was all made before we actually before we actually met yeah it's called California Girls EP it's like on YouTube it's not it's really rare like there's six songs and we pretty much made every song on there except for maybe one or two when we met is when like we started making Cry Baby, which is like what that song White Tea is on. But yeah, that's that's how we met. And then we were like couch surfing together for a really long time. And then now he's like in a good place. I'm in a better place. So yeah, this is mad rare, but we're about to listen to Operation Love on Noisy Radio on Beats One with uh, Young Jizza. Lil Peep, me, and J Trauma. Shouts out. Yeah, Lil Kennedy is the song that we made. That's on the uh, California Girls EP. And it was the first solo song me and him ever made. Came out in December of 2015. I sent him this beat and then he got on it like instantly and sent it back. And I thought he was out of his mind because he was talking about like methamphetamine and like ketamine and all this crazy like he doesn't do meth or any like crazy shit like that but like anybody rap or sing about ketamine before which is like a really bizarre drug that like i've used sometimes like it was just it was just bizarre and he's just saying wild shit. so lil kennedy was like the first song we ever made together and that was really tight so um like yeah so this is uh this net arb playing lil kennedy by pete produced by me on noisy radio on beats one um xavier was one of the first people I was involved with as far as like beats and like just music. Um, back when I lived in Milwaukee, I used to set up shows and I booked the first Milwaukee show 
um, in 2014 for Seshala Water Boys on their first tour, like right when these guys had just left Raider Clan or whatever. And I had them play at this place called Borg Ward in Milwaukee. If anybody is listening from Milwaukee, they know of this place called Borg Ward. It was a, a DIY like art space, like art studio that's no longer a thing anymore. But we would throw shows there all the time. You could probably fit like 150 people in there, maybe 100. It was really small. We packed that shit and like sold it out or whatever. But that's when I first met him. And then I was like, yo, I'm about to like move to LA. And like, obviously he probably did not care because I was just like some dude at the time. But when I moved and I actually lived in the same neighborhood as him and Chris Travis and Eddie, Eddie Baker, we all lived in um, Boyle Heights, like coincidentally, which is like East LA, like a little east of downtown. So we were just like, we were all pretty new to the area or whatever. And I just, we just started like kicking it and like partying or whatever, turning up. And then, um, we made uh, the song called, we only made a couple songs, honestly, and then a beat tape, but we made this song called Hollow Be Thy Squad. And uh, that beat actually was originally for this tape that Chris Travis was gonna do with Rob Banks, which I don't think a lot of people know, but they didn't use the beat. So I was like, I'm gonna just give this to Wolf. And then he used it. Since we live so close, he was like, come over, let's make beats. I was like, word. And I thought we were gonna rap on them at first, but like we just had it be a beat tape. But he he took all these samples from like CDs he found in Little Tokyo and just like random dollar CDs. And we would just rip those samples and like just throw drums on them or whatever. And then we made a beat tape called Tears on My MPK. And then that came out. And then like a year later, we made this song called In Case They Ain't Know which uh, the beat for that was heavily inspired by uh, the future tape Dirty Sprite 2, which was super sick. And yeah, Wolf's a cool ass dude. Tracy's my favorite person to talk about. Tracy, when we were in this group Thrax House or whatever, I was like recruiting for like new members. I was on Facebook one day and like he had posted a link to one of his videos in 2014 on one of my homegirls pages or some weird and like that's when he was called young bruh that was his first name and the song was called um eternal this was like mad wavy and it was kind of cloud rappy ish and it was just like it was like the coolest i'd ever heard i just thought he was like so unique and so cool yeah so i just added him to the group literally after like hearing two songs of his and turns out he was originally from seattle like he's from virginia but he's like born and spent some time in seattle and he had actually went to the same high school as like one or two uh, as uh, like one or two of the members of thrax house because thrax house started in seattle uh like kina Ada and this bro young ugly and they actually already knew tracy from like way back in the day so it was just mad random it was like yo this is young bro and they're like oh we know this bro like by his real name or whatever so yeah, that was sick, but or I, after I heard him in 2014, we made this whole tape called Emotion, which was produced by like me mainly and then like Young Ugly, maybe like a couple other people. And it dropped on his birthday. Yeah, in 2014. And it was it dropped while he was on a flight from Virginia to Seattle. He was like running away from home in Virginia for whatever reason. So he went to Seattle and then and I was just like, dude, come live with me in LA. Like I had a apartment. I was working at Starbucks. I was in college. I had a car. Like my life was whatever. It was pretty chill. So I was like, come live with me. And then he did. And then he's been in LA like ever since. Like he's, he's went home like a few times, but yeah, he, <clears throat> he went from young bro. He was young bro for a long time. And then he turned his name to little Tracy because I gave him a Tracy McGrady Jersey as like a Thrax house passed down. Um, Kinata had gave it to me and then I gave it to Tracy. Like he gave it to me when I joined and then I gave it to Tracy when he joined. And I think he lost that, but there's old music videos of him wearing it. But like when I gave him that Jersey, he started calling himself like Tracy, like Tracy McGrady, a little Tracy, like, and then he eventually dropped the young bro name and just went with Tracy. But yeah, I love that fool. He's my, he's my favorite rapper. Soldier Witch's Faith. Soldier Witch's Faith, produced by me. Um, the beat was actually one of the f 
probably one of the first 20 or 30 beats I'd ever made. The song came out like a year and a half after I made the beat. Like I made the beat and then gave it to him like a minute later after I made it. Yeah, it's mad lo-fi. It's like auto-tune. It's weird. It's loud. It's thumping. It's sick. Yeah, Soldier Witch Faith uh, by Young Bruh, a.k.a. Lil Tracy, produced by Netarb on Noisy Radio on Beats 1. Uh, shout out to Ghostman, Wavy, and Chapo. Come see us if you're in North America. The tickets are on ghostman.com. Shout out to all of Gothboy Click. Shout out to Ghostman, of course. Horsehead working on dying, filthy. Shout out to Money Posse, my friend Reese, my roommate Mel, and Brennan, Dash, Father. Yeah, shout out to all of them. Yeah, online you can hit me the same handle on everything. It's at Netarb Nagrom, which is a weird ass name. It's just my name backwards, Brayden Morgan, but N E D A R B N A G R O M, like dot com backslash that for everything. Except for Bandcamp, Bandcamp's just netarb.bandcamp.com. But yeah, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, anything is Netarb Nagram. Like, just Google it. So there's this song that is the single for my album that I'm working on, which is like completely produced by me. And I'm basically like picking my friends to be on this album. And I just say like, who's going to be on what song? And uh, I try to make it like as organic as possible. I'm like, I tell each other like, yo, are you down to do a song with so-and-so? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. So the first one was the song called Overdose, which uh, the vocals are Lil Zubin from Working On Dying. He's actually from Philly. Working On Dying is from Philly. And uh, that's like a collective out of Philly. And it's Zubin and Wickerface Springs Eternal, who's in Goth Boy Click of course, and produced by me. And uh, yeah, it's the first single for my album, which is called Amity, which will come out sometime probably early next year because it's gonna take a while to make. But yeah, this song is called Overdose. Lil Zubin, Wicked Face, produced by me on Noisy Radio on Beats 1. <laughs>